greatest climate change misconception in the world today is that it's not a critical issue, that it's not, that there's not a, a need for urgency today. That to me is something that I find very frustrating. You know, the, the fact that there are people who don't recognize the urgency and the criticality of climate change. Um, and that's something that in the context of my classes, um, I really just try to expose students to, um, to the science, to the literature, and also to, um, to the impacts of climate change in terms of on communities around the world. I grew up in the Bronx in New York, and uh, I'm one of eight children. My father and my mom, both Irish, Irish immigrants, and uh, it was very much of a, you know, middle class, working, uh, working class neighborhood. And uh, I just remember going to Gailey Park. That was kind of a, a Sunday morning thing to watch Irish football. But the most important trait that I got from my mom, I, I think, is a a compassion and an understanding, and also a curiosity. She was not someone who necessarily traveled a lot when she was raising children, but she was just so curious about the world and excited, and she loved meeting new people, and she loved that sort of engagement, and that's something that I believe I have, and I'm very grateful to her for the curiosity that she instilled in me. Growing up in the Bronx has also given me some interesting insights to understand how people think and oftentimes, you know, there can be this very sort of cosmopolitan view, um, but I think it's really critical that we recognize and take into consideration the various views um, that oftentimes are sort of driven by where people live and their sort of immediate realities. I really came into the energy space while I was on an area language studies fellowship in Kazakhstan. Uh, actually, I first went to Russia as part of this fellowship, and then I was in Kazakhstan, and I was seeing sort of firsthand two countries where energy was such a pivotal part of their how they thought about national security and how they thought about development. And I was struck by what I saw as sort of an imbalanced view that there was really the emphasis was on oil and gas and uh, not sort of thinking about a sort of a more, a more diverse approach to, to development. So I became very intrigued with looking at political transitions and how energy and natural resources uh, played a role. Uh, I arrived at NYU via Colgate University, so I spent a couple of years teaching at Colgate. Loved it, it was really where I knew that the classroom was sort of my home. And I had been an adjunct at NYU at the Center for Global Affairs before it was a graduate program. And once the graduate program got started in 2004, I approached the dean and kind of inquired about opportunities, and then in 2005 I came on board full time. So, you know, I've been here almost 14 years um, as a full time member of the faculty and now academic director of the program. I had two mentors in, um, while I was doing my uh, graduate work uh, Gita Steiner Kamsi, uh, who really sort of encouraged her students to sort of think about their work outside of the classroom and to sort of really take their research and make it meaningful. And then um, Charles Tilley. And Charles Tilley is, was a very famous um, humanity social scientist. He was kind of very much of a Renaissance scholar, a prolific writer, and just an extraordinary educator who cared so deeply about his students. No one ever kind of understood how he had the time to both write and teach, and then also just to give so much of himself to, um, to his students. Uh, and you know, one of the things that he said to me, so when I was graduating, he put me forward for a fellowship, and I said, I don't know how to thank you for the support, and he said, pay it forward. Just do what I, hopefully, what you've seen from me, do that for your students, and that, that is sort of my guiding principle in terms of how I approach uh, my work in education. NYU is important for the energy industry as well as all industries because it's here in New York. It's, um, 
it is in and of the city. It's a global university. It's, um, they've made, I think, a really deep commitment to sustainability, and they mean it, and you see it in terms of how, they're, how they approach um, the consumption on campus, how they think about um, technology. Uh, there's some great incubators now that focus on um, energy innovation and, and clean energy and, and how to sort of promote startups and provide them with the, with the foundation and the resources that they need to thrive. And I think the fact that, you know, we have a school of engineering, we have, a, you know, we have global affairs, we have law school, business school, that you can sort of take this, all the knowledge and um, the expertise that's here and you know, really merge it to think at many deep like levels around what's happening in the energy space. And you know, we are under we are experiencing a, an energy transition. Um, however, there's still this sort of feeling that it's going to be a very slow transition. And I believe that there's a much deeper urgency that, and I. Believe that we have the technologies and we have the capabilities to um, to make it happen faster, and I think we have to make it happen faster. What I probably most want to be remembered for is is my teaching. I'm first and foremost uh, a teacher, and I feel that the classroom is 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 kind of a very important space for me. Uh, and I'm hoping that I'm imparting knowledge and curiosity and skills um, that students can, can really harness and, and use to make a difference. So that I believe is kind of what I see as my biggest legacy.